James Price. Hi, James. Hello, Alex. How are you? I'm all right. How are you, my love? I'm very, very well. Let's get our Gloucester on. Let's get our Gloucester on. <laughs> right, boyo. Do you know what? I, this, the, the Keir Starmer and the gifts, right? Last night, I was having a funny turn. I sat there and I thought, maybe Keir Starmer's not so bad. I put this on Twitter. I'm never going to write that again. I was like, maybe he could be quite useful in immigration. You never know. Uh, but I was like, mum, over the gifts thing now. Well, I spoke too soon, didn't I? Because it turns out, not only was old Lord... Uh, Ali buying him clothes and bins and all of that uh, and then gave him a flat for uh, his boy when he did his GCSEs although I don't believe that the dates look, don't line up. Seems like Sir Keir Starmer's been using that flat a heck of a lot hasn't he? And weirdly putting things on the shelf like Christmas cards and family pictures to make it look like his own flat. Why wasn't he at home? What's going on James? It's all a little bit fishy, isn't it? And this is the problem, you know, the old truism, it's not the lie, it's the cover-up. And of course, actually, it's it's both. But people tend to try and cover things up when they know they've done something that isn't exactly right. Look, Starmer is a lawyer and he was the director of public prosecutions. And so he, he sees things through a very legalistic lens and thinks, well, if I have abided by the letter of the law, it doesn't really matter if I've abided by the spirit of it. And the spirit of this is supposed to be that, you know, people can't be, be under any undue influence of any kind of lobbying efforts that involve bribery or money or anything like that, right? That's the kind of spirit of things here. And this guy, Lord Ali, has been a Labour peer for a long time, so he's you know got a vote in the House of Lords on legislation and has done for a long time. To have this much money, he's clearly a successful businessman and has done well for himself. And I'm, I'm not really actually got a big problem about this. If you've got a world in which politicians don't get paid huge amounts of money, and here they really, really don't, but if you want to attract the best kind of people in, um, you're going to have to find some other way around it. I think the major problem is just the enormous hypocrisy of all of this, right? Mm. Yeah endless months of going on about how evil Boris Johnson was for buying, you know, having someone pay for wallpaper for him. And every time a Tory does anything like this, oh, they're terrible, evil people, and we're the good moral people because we're lefties and all of that kind of stuff. It then turns around and, and they've got their same snouts in the trough. Now, the smart thing to do would be a, a big kind of reform of all of this and to say, look, we work really, really hard. It's an incredibly stressful job. It's absolutely ridiculous that the Prime Minister has to live in this tiny little flat above number 10 Downing Street and has all these terrible pressures and all the rest of it. Let's get a system going that will be benefited by you know, all the successes and all the rest of it that, that sorts this stuff out. If I've got the person running the country who's worrying about Russia and China and our economy and the health service, I don't want him also worrying about all this other kinds of stuff. Just set it all off into a trust somewhere. He can make a load of money afterwards don't mind that either. You know, you compare it to the president of the United States, they've got huge numbers of butlers and all these kinds of things. Mm. We've got we've got Keir Starmer worrying about all this kind of stuff. But in return, then, you want him not to be so, A, blimey, you know, uh, holier than thou about all of this kind of stuff, and to actually then be a little bit more honest about it. And we, we seem to be stuck in the worst of all possible worlds here. And and the heart bleeds that it's come to bite Starmer on the backside. Right. Well, let's talk about the honesty in all of this. So, first of all, what I want to say is this to our mate Sir Keir Starmer. If he's worried about his son's GCSEs and his son's ability to focus when there's the press pack outside the house because it is during an election campaign, then fair enough. What about the parents who now aren't going to be able to pay for their kids' education because they happen to scrape and, you know, struggle and strive to put their kids in a private school and the VAT's coming off and all of a sudden, I don't know, they're going to have to disrupt their child's education by moving school what about them uh, 20 grand would have helped them no doubt but i want to know so he's there going like oh we went there because my boy my boy you kept saying my boy was doing his exams when you look at the dates his boy wasn't doing his exams his boy was there for maybe the first week of him in that flat then after that they were just i don't know living in that flat so why lie also was his boy doing his exams in 2021 when sakir for some reason you used this geezer's flat instead of his own to broadcast during Covid and uh, do a sombre tribute to the late Queen and then put all this stuff on the mantelpiece in the background of the picture to make it look like it probably could be his house. What's going on there? Um, was he following Covid social distancing guidelines? Who else was in this house? Because it wasn't his house. Was he even allowed to be there in the first place? Why did he then give a security pass to this Lord Alley guy who was giving him all the clothes and the glasses and the flat? Um, and why is Lord Ali giving stuff to seemingly everybody? Everyone who's in the Labour Party front bench has got a new wardrobe and a holiday out of this man. I mean, <laughs> it's just ridiculous. 
Yeah, you, look, you, you put this much better than I could have done, Alex. This is absolutely right. And and the, this is the other part of it. You've got the, the politics of all of this. You know, to say, well, I just wanted the best for my son. That, absolutely right. That is an instinct that every morally sane person in the whole world has. They want something better for their children. Of course, the doctrine of socialism that the Labour Party so adopts says that caring about your own family is only moral up to an extent because, you know, giving too much to them and looking after them too much is actually an unfair preference and is harming other people, right? That's the kind of left-wing greed on this. And as you say, what about all these people whose education is going to be massively affected by the destructive policies they've got going? And, you know, I'll go further. I may have upset some people by saying that politicians should, by and large, be paid a lot more. And you can see why people would get upset about that. If you've got Starmer being paid, what, £164,000 a year, and he can't afford his own suits and glasses, well, what about the pensioners on 13 grand who are getting their winter fuel right. payments taken away? This is how stupid all this stuff looks. What he should say is, right, I'm in charge now. I'm going to fix the economy. I'm going to get growth really, really, really revving. We haven't really grown since 2008. Most of that time, the Conservatives were in. And the fact is, actually, it's the civil service blocking any kind of building, any kind of growth, any kind of initiative at all. But we'll park that one. I'm going to get the economy going. And everyone's going to laugh at how trifling this is, because we're all going to be so right. wealthy that we're able to pay for suits and glasses and school fees. And it's all going to be great. Just watch and wait and see and judge me in a few years' time. But he knows he's not going to be able to do that. Well, so it, it seems to me the man is the opposite. The man is like Teflon to growth. He scares everyone off. You've got all the millionaires leaving the country because they're like, who knows what's going to come up in that autumn budget. He terrifies everyone that they're going to be putting clink for criticising him. Uh, now he's going to have this international investment summit two weeks before the autumn budget. Get the great and the good over to invest in Britain. But he's turned around and said, no, nope. guess who's not on the list? Elon Musk, because he was mean about the United Kingdom during the riots. And Elon Musk has turned around. This is probably the most powerful interesting innovator in the world. And has urged everyone to boycott what he is calling pedo-free United Kingdom uh, over this. I mean, this is just pathetic. I'm not saying Elon Musk is shining himself in glory in all of this, but if you want to attract growth, you better not start picking a fight with one of the global leaders in innovation and AI. Yeah, it's a very, very good point. And then, by the way, they're just copying what the Biden administration did, which was not inviting Musk to uh, manufacturers of electric vehicles, whereas Tesla, of course, is by far and away the world leader in this, because, again, they didn't like Musk on this stuff. He's obviously a controversial figure. But if you look at what's happening in the UK from the vantage point of the United States, the fact that we are letting out these criminals, and today the government, the Labour government, has had to acknowledge they let out a bunch of criminals who they shouldn't have let out, and they can't actually account for their whereabouts right now. One of them has already gone on to offend again already in a shock to absolutely nobody at all. They're letting some of those people out so they can, as you say, put some people who said some stupid, nasty things on the internet into prison. Into prison! Yeah, she has got a suspended sentence and some old you know, granny is going to go into prison for saying something stupid on Facebook. And this is what Starmer's focusing <laughs> maybe, on. This maybe, is going to attract investment. Yeah, maybe, maybe Elon's not going to set foot in Britain because he's called us a pedo-freeing nation. He'll be worried about going to prison himself. Do you know what is else really getting on my nerves about the blimmin' Labour government it is how infantile, how banal, how stupid they've become, especially Ed Miliband. Now, I don't know if you've seen this utterly ridiculous video from the Labour Party conference. If you haven't, uh, hide behind the sofa, cover your eyes and cover your ears if you don't have a strong constitution, because it's going to make you want to throw up inside your own face. And to <laughs> me, this 100% indicates quite where we've fallen in this country. Roll the VT. Hey besties, I'm at the Labour conference and this year the vibes are immaculate. No cap. This year's conference is giving change. It's giving national renewal. It's giving government. This conference has so much riz. Low-key drip. Our policies this year are popping off. Don't believe us? Check the receipts. Slay. This is sending me. The vibes are slay. Slay the Boots House Down, Houston, I'm deceased. This cafe ate and left no crumbs. Slay. Liverpool has given me life, no gassing, peak flex. Today I'm serving conference. I just think that these people are just utterly ridiculous. What is wrong with our front bench that they are literally making videos like that and not running the country properly?
Right. It, it would be fine if they were doing everything really well, right? That you know, people wouldn't wouldn't mind. But the fact that it's been such a rocky start, I mean, that is so embarrassing. And off the back of David Lammy, the, the foreign secretary yesterday, uh, at the UN General Assembly in front of world leaders from all cro across the, the planet, talking about the, the horrible war that Russia is legally persecuting in Ukraine by managing to make it all about himself and saying that, you know, he's also, you know, as a black man understands what's going on there and this kind of stuff. And Ed Miliband is just, I mean, it was a few years ago when he started listening to Greta Thunberg as if she knew what she was talking about other than being a, a, a schoolgirl playing truant. This is just the kind of sad decline of national politics. And, you know, we've gone from teaching Latin in schools to remedial English at universities. And frankly, it, it shows, doesn't it? And these are the people who we've been entrusted to try and pull Britain out of all these difficulties. They're the people who are supposed to be able to take on the vested interest in the civil service and the blob and try and reform things. And we're meant to be trusting these people, don't forget, with regulating artificial intelligence and these new technologies of the future. And these are the people we've entrusted to protect us against the fascists in Iran and the, you know, the evil fascists in uh, Russia and the communists in China. These are the people we've entrusted to you know, be able to work out what kind of energy we should use and how we should be able to build infrastructure and they do this kind of infantile right. nonsense. But this is the thing. Uh, you see these constant views. Ed Miliband's the worst offender, putting rubbish all over TikTok, rubbish all over uh, Twitter. And I think to myself, this man is literally single-handedly destroying our self-sufficiency and energy capacity. He's going to plunge us into an energy crisis by preventing any future contracts of um, gas and oil in the North Sea, thinking it saves the planet, buying into this utterly infantile, banal, puerile rhetoric about, oh, Oh, the United Kingdom must do this, this and this because, oh, look, here's Greta Thunberg going to hold her up like Simba, like she's some divine seer. And I just think this is why, this is why the rest of the world are getting a march on us and we're going into decline because, like, absolute numbskulls who, for some reason, are now the people charged with running the country and making videos like that. It isn't the problem, it is a symptom of something going horribly wrong. And not just in this country, you look across the whole Western world and you You've got a load of baby humans, baby adults going, oh, climate catastrophe. Oh, everyone can be whatever gender they want to be. And I think this is brain rot. This is not realism. This is playground stuff. And honestly, James, I'm in despair. Well, I'm glad I, I got that my chest. Look. Hard, hard times create strong men, and we've been through hard times in the past, right? In you know, in the, in the 1940s, our grandfathers drove tanks across France and across Germany, or they fought in the Far East, or they fought over the skies over Britain, or they fought on the oceans. And those hard men made good times. But then the weak, t uh, the good times made weak men, which have made hard times again. And uh, these things are cyclical. And I would just like to remind people of the words of Winston Churchill that should probably try and inspire us. We should consider ourselves lucky, really, that we live in times that call for greatness, that call for us to rise up to our potential. And how many other people would have loved to have had that kind of opportunity? Because we are in a very dark hour right now, and we really should be hoping that people can actually step up uh, and, and take on these enormous challenges. Because if we don't sort ourselves out, the Chinese Communist Party, le leading a bunch of other really very evil organizations and regimes around the world are coming to take our real freedoms away, not our freedoms to you know, uh, say silly things online, any of that kind of stuff. These are people out there who hate us and want to destroy our way of life. And we need to stand up and fight against these people. Yeah. And this well, guy, now, are they the ones we trust to be able to do that? <laughs> Those absolute boneheads, I don't think so. But James, you know, when it when come of the hour, uh, can I share an Anderson shelter with you? Because you are a sensible human being. And we'd have good fun, wouldn't we? It'd be all right. Absolutely. Anyway, uh, James Price, though, he's a former Conservative Special Advisor.